There is no denying that Ubisoft has been in something of a rut lately in terms of optics surrounding the company, as well as the quality of their recent game releases. Looking at scores for Assassin's Creed Valhalla, for example, this is probably one of their higher scoring games in recent memory, and even then the scores aren't where they used to be for the Assassin's Creed series. And then you look at another game like Watch Dogs Legion, the scores are even worse this is definitely a game that I personally found disappointing and many people did as well seemingly then next up we got a more recent release Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Extraction which was met with middling fanfare from both critics and users alike and then on top of all of that you've got upcoming games that are not being well received in terms of anticipation with titles like Tom Clancy's X Defiant being mass disliked because it just doesn't feel like a Tom Clancy game and it just feels like Ubisoft is losing touch with what Tom Clancy fans desire and then you've got the introduction of Ubisoft Quartz which was met with overwhelmingly negative feedback all on top of the company's culture of harassment misconduct discrimination and abuse that's been widely reported with Ubisoft not doing much about it according to employees despite Yves Guillemot's promise that he's gonna really make sure to stand about that kind of culture at the company it's more like he's trying to bury the issues under the rug while pretending like he's apologetic to the camera and as if all that wasn't bad enough now we're hearing news that Ubisoft is shutting down or ending support for not one but two projects starting with Watch Dogs Legion which according to Video Games Chronicles report Watch Dogs Legion will not be getting any further updates so what will happen with this game is instead of new seasons they're essentially going to re cycle seasons three through five they're going to be in a loop so the game will still be up and online but support for this title has ended it definitely seems like they were planning further support than what we actually got but the game in terms of sales and player base didn't gain the traction that made it worthwhile for Ubisoft and then on top of all that you've got not just the ending of support for this live service but just straight up the shutdown of battle royale game hyperscape you may recall that Ubisoft launched this roughly two years ago back in 2020 if I'm remembering correctly and it's this cyberpunk themed arena shooter style uh, battle royale that uh, had a lot of mobility and verticality and it had some interesting things going for it but it was lacking in execution on a number of fronts and it just couldn't stand out from the pack of battle royale games that are out there in an oversaturated market and so today on January 27th 2022 Ubisoft and the official hyperscape website posted the following message contenders we have made the difficult decision to end development of hyperscape and shut the game down as of April 28th 2022 so in about three months we set out to create a vertical close quarters and fast paced shooter experience and we're extremely grateful to our community for joining us on our journey we will be taking key learnings from this game into future projects to the hyperscape community thank you for your passion and dedication to the world of Neo Arcadia both inside and outside of the game your devotion to the game we built will always be cherished reach out to us if you have any questions sincerely hyperscape you know it's strange I would have expected Ubisoft to stick with these games longer given that titles like Rainbow Six Siege for example launched in a really rough state and then Ubisoft got to work on it made tons of improvements and now Rainbow Six Siege is one of the most popular esports games out there and same with For Honor which started out really rough and then picked up a solid player base after those refinements I would have hoped that Hyperscape and Watch Dogs Legion maybe would have gotten a similar treatment but maybe the player base for those were just that bad maybe it was just far worse than what Ubisoft was anticipating and it was just not tenable and Ubisoft did try to support Hyperscape in the weeks and months after launch despite the rough numbers in terms of you know twitch viewership and how many players were concurrently playing but their efforts were ultimately not enough and this is a game that's had a rough time from the outset for example here's an article published close to the game's launch hyperscape is having a rough launch on twitch ubisoft's battle royale was popular during its technical test but not its launch it was popular initially in large part because of the huge marketing push where they essentially got a bunch of streaming giants to stream this particular game they were likely paid for it so there was that initial hype but once the game came out and it was 
in the hands of players to fill the player base and to generate continued interest in this title, things just started to die down. And signs could be seen early on when Hyperscape had over 240,000 followers on Twitch, but only 11,000 viewers were watching. And this is, again, not that much longer after launch. Comparatively, Fall Guys, which came out around the same time, had over 311,000 active viewers the afternoon of this article and 431,000 total followers on the platform. So obviously just a lot more players, a lot more followers, but a lot more engagement from those followers. It's hard to point to exactly one reason that this game failed because for all intents and purposes, it was an interesting take on the battle royale genre. I could tell that they were definitely trying to be different with this but in execution it just didn't stand out enough you really have to do something special to kind of rise above the likes of call of duty warzone and fortnite but what hyperscape didn't uh, really excite the critics and users all that much you can see the meta score here i mean the lack of interest is particularly noticeable when you realize that only 12 critics actually review this game and then the user score is looking rough only 62 ratings which indicates that not a whole lot of player even really check the game out or didn't feel compelled enough by it to leave a review one way or the other. Some of the criticisms include things like balancing and uh, time to death and whatnot, though there was a niche enough audience that did enjoy what it was trying to do, even if its execution wasn't perfect. But it also didn't help that Hyperscape came out exclusively on the Epic Game Store. I don't know if it coming out on Steam would have necessarily saved it, but at the very least, more of a player base would be willing to try this free-to-play Battle Royale out if it were spread across more platforms, especially Steam, which is still the preferred platform for PC digital titles, and so that probably didn't help matters. But yeah, Hyperscape is the story of a game that tried to break into an oversaturated market that could generate boatloads of money if you really managed to break in, but it was too kind of middle of the ground in execution despite some interesting ideas. And so it's one of those games whose fate was kind of already written on the wall unless Ubisoft could pull off some miraculous comeback, which unfortunately they didn't. And it doesn't entirely surprise me that Hyperscape has died off just two years after launch. When did this game launch? August 11th, 2020. We are in January of 2022, and not even two years, really, more like a year and a half. So we have yet another failed Ubisoft title on top of all of the recent issues when it comes to Ubisoft games just no longer being as well received as they used to be, like how Assassin's Creed and Watch Dogs and Rainbow Six, uh, all of these games that have come out most recently, they just haven't generated the kind of buzz that more celebrated titles in recent years have, and it just doesn't seem like Ubisoft is really pushing the boundaries of what they can accomplish on top of just poor leadership on the part of Yves Gimo that has created that awful culture and on top of endeavors like Ubisoft cores that really highlight the company's greed. It's just abundantly clear to me that Ubisoft is in dire need of a leadership shakeup so that leadership can actually start to focus on more boundary-pushing titles instead of rehashing the same open-world structure for basically every game. And beyond that, workers need to feel safe to do their best work, and Yves Guillermo is not fully addressing the issues to the level that he should be. And then greedy endeavors like NFTs and all that just highlight his priorities. It's not for the players or for the art of making games. It's all just, you know, whatever will generate the most revenue and profits, which leads to compromised quality and a compromised culture at the company. And it's what leads to underwhelming results like the death of Watch Dogs Legion and the even worse death of the battle royale game Hyperscape, whose send-off will be even more unceremonious, a game that I don't think the history books will really remember all that much. I guess only time will tell what the future holds for Ubisoft, whether they can make some kind of comeback with some of their upcoming projects. I cannot say I'm particularly confident about this company's future, but I guess, again, only time will tell. In the meantime, though, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on the current state of Ubisoft and its projects and the optics surrounding the company as a whole, and what you think about the sudden ending of support for Watch Dogs Legion and the sudden shutting down of the failed Battle Royale project, Hyperscape. Share your thoughts in the comments below, and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time.
Yong out.